Hello Home Brood, and welcome to the first part of this series in which I will be building a dust collection system I designed for my CNC router. The CNC router was a project I started in February of 2016 and finished just around the end of the year. I figured the best project to start with is something that will make all future projects cleaner. So let's get started. I drew the design in Autodesk Inventor and all the G-code was written using Autodesk Fusion 360. Before I drew the design, I tested the motor's amp draw using a piece of wood attached to the spindle, changing the diameter and the depth until I reached an amperage I was comfortable with. The motor got up to full speed, drawing 2.5 amps of the allowable 3 with an embeller that was 12 inches in diameter and 2.5 inches deep. Now that I know the size of the impeller, we can start cutting the pieces out. I've used quarter inch birch plywood purchased from my local hardwood store. Using my table saw, I cut out the impeller fins using the same material as the rings. After a little bit of sanding to clean up the edges, I glued them into the slots using normal wood glue. The slots made aligning the parts easy and helped keep the impeller from falling over as it dried. With a couple of weights holding it down, we can move on to modifying the shaft of the motor. The motor shaft was an input gear into a gearbox, so it had helical gears cut into it already. I figured I could use those as a spline and hammer a piece of wood onto it, and then use a set screw into the end of it to hold it all together. Here I'm drilling the hole ready to tap it with a five millimeter tap. It's at this point that I realized there was a little bit of an issue with the hole size. There was a little bit of wobble in the drill press making the hole size a little bit larger than it needed to be. So I decided to switch to a bottoming tap and hopefully get enough threads at the lower section of the drill so the fastener had enough material to bite on. Uh, this ended up working in the long run. I just had to use a much longer screw than I originally intended. Now that the motor is finished, we can complete the assembly of the impellers. I left the fins a little bit long so that I can trim them flush with the rings. After some sanding, the impeller is ready to go. The final step for the impeller is to glue the coupler to the ring of the impeller. I used a series of spacers as a standoff to keep the coupler from riding along the housing of the motor. Off camera, 
I pre-drilled the coupler and then hammered it onto the motor shaft so that the splines would be cut into the wood. Here I am applying a little bit of wood glue to the coupler. I will then place the impeller on the coupler and use the set screw to hold it all together as it dries. With the completion of the impeller, we can move on to building the blower housing. I started cutting out the front and back panels of the housing on the CNC router. I used quarter inch plywood like I did on the rings and the fins of the impeller. With the front and back panels complete, I moved on to machining out the housing walls. I used 3 quarter inch birch plywood brought from my local home store. I was able to cut two sections of the housing on each piece of wood and I needed four, so I had to do this pattern twice. The holes that were drilled in the beginning of this process are used to locate and align the pieces with each other and the two panels. During the dry fit, I tried installing the dowels into the housing sections and realized the CNC didn't make the holes quite large enough. However, they did fit in the front and rear panels of the housing. I'm not sure exactly what happened because I used the same code for the front, rear, and housing sections, but for some odd reason the CNC acted a little bit different. To mitigate this problem, I put a 5 16 drill bit in my drill press and re-drilled all the holes in the housing sections. Now that the dowels all fit inside the holes, it's time to glue it up. Here, I am putting the impeller inside the housing to make sure that I lay everything up in the right direction. Since everything is symmetric, I could easily build the housing so that the blades are facing the wrong direction, and that'll make the blower less efficient. With the housing base dry, we can move on to gluing the housing top to the motor. I machined 
four three-quarter inch holes in the housing panel so that I could countersink the lag bolts into the surface. Since they are not wide enough to clamp onto the panel, I had to flip them over and use extra wide washers to clamp everything together. I used washers with three-quarter inch ODs to help align the parts as everything dries. With the housing drying, this is the first time I can mock everything up. It doesn't fit together perfectly because the nuts holding the housing panel together are extruding, but this gives me a good indication that everything should fit together the way I intended. Now that everything has completed drying, we can start with the final assembly. Here, I am removing the bolts that were clamping the plate together, flipping them around the correct way. With the housing cover placed on the housing base, I am using the drill press to pre-drill all the locations that I'll be using screws to mount them together. And this concludes part one of building the dust collector system for my CNC router. In part two, we will build the main box that holds the collection bin and the filter. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'd love to hear what you think, so feel free to leave a comment and ask anything you'd like about the project. Subscribe and click the notification bell if you would like to know when the next video is available. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.